Hi, I'm Richard here at YWAM Tyler, and we're talking with Debbie Lascelles here at the Mercy Works office about the coronavirus, how that it's impacted our campus. We wanted to be able to share this information with you so you can be reassured God's still winning in the nations. Let's join Debbie inside. Hey Debbie, thank you so much for meeting with us today. I appreciate no it. As you know, this virus conversation is, everybody's talking about it. Um, everywhere. And everywhere. And we've done a lot on our end to we prepare have. ourselves, uh, do due diligence with everything that um, local and national authorities are asking us to do. Yeah, we should And have. so we just wanted to have a little meeting with you, uh, okay. update everybody who's got those types of questions about yeah. what are we doing? How is this impacting our, cam our campus? What well, has changed a whole lot of things, as you know. We've restricted pretty much all mission travel right now. We are not doing mission trips right now, except through the internet and locally into each other and, and encouraging and supporting each other right now because we want to minimize risk as much as possible. Even though we're youth with a mission, we have, as you know, a lot of older people on our campus or we have people with um, health issues that we don't want to you know, compromise them or e even other members at our community, of our community at large, you know. So we're trying to comply with those guidelines. So for the next two weeks especially, we're really minimizing everything. We're, uh, we don't even have our next schools operating that we normally have in April. And our next outreaches, we're canceled all foreign or even domestic outreaches. We may do some local things. And even those will be very, very restricted right now. Um, right now, if we even do that, we're keeping them on campus to do campus projects, prayer and worship. Um, Bible reading, that sort of thing initially, and then we'll reevaluate that as we go. But every day, sometimes hourly, <laughs> things change with different guidelines coming out or different things that we discover about this virus and its implications. So um, we're just sort of taking it one day at a time, but yeah, things have really slowed down and changed a whole lot. And we're trying to be very prayerful about that. Our K through 12 school is on hold right now for the next three weeks. We're doing online classes and uh, a lot of our meetings now, in fact, most of our meetings are online because we can't have gatherings or we've chosen to not have gatherings of more than 10. Uh, even the way we function as a community eating wise has changed. We're only allowing 10 people through the food line at a time. We're asking people to disperse through the campus, take their food home, that sort of thing. And again, to minimize risk and just care about the overall health of our community. So we're implementing changes like that that are drastic. What? Well, yeah, necessary. Yeah, absolutely. They won't be forever, you know. This is a season. We don't know how long it's going to last, and times are uncertain. But, but our faith's not uncertain, and our faith in God is not shaken one bit. What do you see as some of the main concerns with missionaries on our campus here? What are some of the things that you're hearing they're most concerned about? I think just the unknowns. People are afraid of the unknown. What's this going to mean? And uh, how might this affect me? That sort of thing. And especially people with conditions, you know, that I've talked about health conditions or if they're older, um, it is a scary time. And so they want to know that can, um, you know, that we're doing measure, taking measures to prevent the spread of it, which we are. And we have told our people we've established some best practice guidelines of washing hands and um, staying in if you're ill. And we're closely monitoring those that would have a fever or some kind of illness because there are a lot of other illnesses going around too, like colds and flus of not the corona type, you know. And so we're monitoring all those things very closely and we're asking people to be quarantined if they have any symptoms at all and that sort of thing. Well, I appreciate you answering some of the questions about how we're implementing some strategies on our campus to keep us healthy and minimize yeah. the spread of, of the virus and, and even how that's impacting us with the school closures for April. Yeah. Um, and some of those decisions, we're actually just postponing those. Those are going to join future schools this yeah. fall. Yeah, right. So with that, I'm sensing that there's actually some hope on our campus. Like we're not in this major dismay. Not at all. Um, what do you think some of the reason for that is here, at least at YWAM Tyler, why we're still filled with hope? Because we know a God of hope. And um, like I said, even though the times that we live in are uncertain, our faith is absolutely our not uncertain you know we it's unshakable and god's not up there wringing his hands like what am i going to do about this virus he knows and we can absolutely completely positively trust him and he knows what he's doing and i think a lot of people are concerned about finances and the economy and all of that i was just sure. thinking this morning though how god is so unlimited in his ability to provide for us 
you know, if all of our supporters go bankrupt, if the whole economy goes completely south, um, God is still not limited. You know, like the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, they had zero economy. But he was able to provide for them, and he's able to provide for you and me, and he, he always will be. He's, he's able to provide manna, or quail dropping out of the sky, or coins in a fish's mouth, sure. or uh, speaking to a leader about hitting a rock, and out comes water. You know, I mean, there's so many examples in Scripture and that we've seen him do personally. And so our confidence is in him and his ability to provide, um, not just materially and financially, but on every level. And so, yeah, we have great reason to hope. And, and also, I've been reading where great revivals came uh, on the heels of plagues in the past. And so, I think, you know, we're all, as a world, we're all having to kind of down tools and almost be in a Sabbath type place. And we're all realizing our need for God, our mm -hmm. need for each other. And that's a good place to be in heaven. How can people that are watching this video right now, uh, both on our campus and abroad, be praying for us, um, the support that we need here in the missions movement that we're a part of? What, what would be some suggestions that you would give? That's a good question. Well, I think that our, our troops stay strong and they don't get discouraged. Right now, I think most people are doing really well. I'm really proud of our community here. People don't seem to be shrinking back. Their faith is strong. Uh, just pray that no one does succumb to any kind of illness or the, especially coronavirus. Uh, right now we haven't had that and we're very thankful that we haven't. Uh, financially, it is going to be some interesting times for us, even though, like I said, God is not limited in His ability to provide. So I think we're going to have testimony to see how He provides. But you can pray for us in that way. We don't have schools coming in. Uh, we don't have hardly any uh, donations coming in at this time. And so it's an interesting time. But again, we're looking to God and seeing how He's going to do this because it's His ministry. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing this with us today. Uh, we're going to uh, use this material on our social platforms as well as our website to keep people informed that, uh, as I started the video, that God is winning in the nations. And so thank you for your time.